It's the Uber suck. The, the what? That is a category I am not familiar with. I think exchange student program is cool. Okay. It's a beautiful melding of two cultures. Yeah. Have you ever done an exchange program? My dad tried to send me to some Armenians once. Does that count? <laughs> no. Dinosaurs are distinguished by an array. Right, who's going to be messed up then? Is it going to be the exchange student or what? Maybe that's what I'm meant to think. Isn't he lunchable? Lunchable. 100% staying at my house. Okay, I'll say a prayer for him. You didn't look at him first? He could be dogly. Dude, stop judging people by their appearance, okay? Ah, uh, it's Rodney Munson. He what? You just don't like him because of that time he beat you up every day for five years. <laughs> I don't always use violence. The important thing is you believe that. No, she doesn't though. She doesn't, she talks to him sometimes. I think I got almost all 14 natural elements memorized. There are 103. <sighs> Students. You're gonna be fine, mate. Don't worry about it. The human sacrifice is about to begin. What, mate? Just, hang on, no, no, no. Just roll it back. Just what did, you, what did he just say? The Incan people chose a beautiful teenage girl to become their princess. Of course they did. I hope this story ends with, and she lived happily ever after. I think it ends with, and she became a scary, discolored, shriveled mummy. Ah. A cursed seal placed there. As a warning. Oh no. Our boy's gonna take that away, isn't he? What's his face? Little defacer. His name's Impada. I'm at the bus station tomorrow night. Ooh. Why are we looking at? Okay. <laughs> Don't take the disc. Yeah. There we go. Right on time. Go on, mate. Good luck. Rest in peace. Sis. Maybe. I don't know. Who knows? It'll be a fun surprise. <laughs> Oh great, even better. Don't just take it, break it. <gasps> okay, oh, hello, daddy. Okay, no, mummy, sorry. <laughs> I haven't seen that in a while, to be fair, was not prepped. <sighs> Sometimes you've got to make sounds, okay? It's good for the soul. So can I go? I think not. You are the chosen one. Mm, just this once, I'd like to be the overlooked one. This is not... Uh, you can be both. Chosen to be overlooked, mate. This blah, blah, bitty blah. I'm so stuffy, give me a scone. Uh, scone? Excuse me. The secret identity is going to be difficult enough to maintain while this exchange student is living with you. Well then, mate, use your, you know, powers as a teacher to, you know, pull some strings. Fine! <laughs> Go. <laughs> In all the years you've known Willow, you've never thought about her lips. Oh, oh. She's my best friend. Makes her not the kind of girl who I think about her lips that much. Why not? The kind of girl that I'm best friends with. And you can do both. I don't think I remember seeing Rodney on the bus back from the field trip. Hey, maybe he awakened the mummy. Why would you? No. And it rose from its tomb. Guys. <laughs> and attacked him. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> no, comfy as ever. Are you sure? Show me. <laughs> oh, whoa, buddy. <laughs> Okay. Were the Incas very advanced? Yeah. Yes, yes, very. Is that gonna be the kid? Yeah. Yeah. Maybe we should ask that crazy man with the big old knife. I don't think he seemed overly chatty. You don't know. Might be a big softy. Uh, I gather that this particular mummy was from the Seven Kaya region of eastern Peru. Oh, talk to it to me, Giles. Um, Pat is there alone. Maybe he could translate the seal. Fall for the old, let me translate that ancient seal for you, come on. Mate, you've got to relax. Do you remember that conversation you had with Buffy about, you know, just being friends? Oh, this is going to be the uh, the mummy, right? The teen? The teen girl? I'm guessing she switched places with uh, Rodney, and now she is... Bada. Oh, buddy doesn't stand a chance, does he? <laughs> okay. Oh, hello. Well, she needs some chapstick. So do we have to speak Spanish when we see him? Because I don't know anything much besides Dorito. God, they're from South America, dude. Like, seriously, we're assuming they don't speak English? Hello. There we are. Yeah. All right, mate, put it back in your pants. Ay, caramba. <sighs> okay. All right, do you know what? Another sip of coffee for me, thank you. Would you like a drink? Coffee. Don't mind it, though. You're a girl. Yes, for many years now. <laughs> Where did you go? Mate. I listened much. That works out well because I talk much. <laughs> <laughs> This is the thing, as much as she's the monster, right, I do feel for her because she was married off, uh, married off, no she wasn't Tyler, that's not the same as sacrificial murder, apologies, sorry, Whew, not enough coffee, I will rectify it, trust me. 
So when she got married with a knife, sorry, that's insensitive. I'm so sorry. I don't know it was a knife, who knows? But you know, she was sacrificed as a teen girl to a god. That's not ideal. That is not ideal at all, right? She didn't deserve that at all. So, you know, it's nice. I'm almost sat here being like, okay, I feel like she should have an opportunity for a life. Obviously she's not going about it the right way. At the same time, once you've been killed because of that, cut off so short, you didn't have that life in her position as a young person, maybe I'd have done the same, right? I had a second chance and I could have taken someone else's, you know? So I do, I feel for her. And so it does, it enamors her, at least to the audience, in the way that she's been presented. You know, it's already a little multi-layered just in the way that they've set it up. But you have so much here. Yeah, it's interesting. She's not confused, she knows exactly. How about friends? They are... Yeah. It is just me. Yeah, where she's come from, she knows exactly, which is interesting. So she's very in control of what she's doing and she knows all of the context. She knows that she's in the future. Uh, is this guy uh, here to protect her or to make sure she is dead? This whole student exchange thing has been a horrible nightmare. They don't even speak American. It's, uh, <clears throat> it's called English, mate. Sorry, I will be that guy because she used it in a shitty way, okay? Oz, man. What do you think? Oh boy. Seth Green. There he is. Oh. Yeah, he's a hot girl. Let me guess. Not your type? Good on him. What does a girl have to do to impress you? Be a boy. You're just impressed by any pretty girl that can walk and talk. She doesn't have to talk. <laughs> Translate this. Something wrong? Surprised she touched it, honestly, considering. You should hide it. I, I think this represents bodyguard. Right, but what? But like guarding what? You or that you stay dead for the god? He guards the mummy against those who would disturb her. Right. Oh, Willow, maybe you could... Stay with Impata for the day. I'd love to. It's your name, Willow. A snack food. And here's how you eat it. <laughs> now I cannot try it. That's why you've been too. <laughs> <laughs> oh. This is the thing. I feel like this is actually going to be genuine. Beautifully done. Well done, mate. Hey. You are strange. What? Girls always tell me that right before they run away. Oh. See, he's opening up to her. This is the thing. And he's going to have to let her go. Yeah. So I think this is going to be genuine for both of them, actually. Not just Xander. I think she's going to kind of, you know what I mean? They're going to have a little bit of a relationship and it's going to be really painful for him, actually, towards the end. Because I think she's going to have to go back. Maybe. Maybe. We'll see. I can spend my life waiting for Xander to go out with every other girl in the world. Or you could talk to him. Or I can just get on with my life. Oh wait, listen, hear me out. Or oh, you could talk to him. Oh God. Where is it? Mate, you need to aim more for like their head as opposed to air. It's you. Hey, it's that guy from Twilight. Hey, what's he want? He said, give me the seal. Mate, I don't know how you're gonna get one of those. Is there a beach anywhere? Like, We're in the crime club, which is kind of like the chess club only with crime and um, no chess. <laughs> That seal nearly got us killed. Your investigation is dangerous. I do not want that just normal life. Yeah, that's the thing, look. She doesn't want danger anymore. That's, the, I mean, it's what I was talking about at the beginning. I think there's a lot to be empathetic towards in regard to Amparta's plight. Like, she just wants to live. She just wants life, right? Because she never got one. Yeah. This is the thing. I think the potential for the ending actually has, like, the ending of the episode and over the course of this episode it could be really tragic and, and powerful, actually, because of that. Can I tell you a secret? <laughs> I like you too. Oh, see, like this is actually very sweet because this is the thing. As much as I'm talking about it and you know giving Xander a little bit of grief, considering this would be good for both of them. He's coming from a place of pining after Buffy when that's never going to go anywhere, right? We know that it would be good for him to have a relationship with someone. I mean, should be Willow, right? And I feel like we're gearing up towards that slowly. We're going to get there. But the fact that he's found that in her, you know, and it is genuine. It's going a little bit further, right? Is healthy. Is good and gets his mind off Buffy and lets him, allows him to process that and come out the other side. Obviously from Amparta's side of things, you know, we know her history and I think it's real for her too. I mean, sure, the caveat of it being the first boy, essentially, well, apart from actual Amparta, right, that she met, and so she's, she's gravitating towards that, right, because she's probably not really had this opportunity before, she was very young, that she's not had many experiences like this, and especially after such a long time and her experience being a mummy. We've seen as well that she gets on with him too. This is good for her. Right? And she's experiencing life in the way that she wants to, in the way that she wasn't allowed to. And so this is sweet. This moment here, it's genuine. It feels genuine because of the context that we know. And that's really nice. And actually, again, like I say, building towards, I think, this tragedy. It's like, I, I want both of them to have this because it's good for them. It's healthy for them, I think. But 
we as the audience know that it can't last, which obviously the characters in the show don't know. That is unique to the audience, and I think in the audience it, it, it holds this, oh, this is nice to watch, I like this, alongside the, ah, oh, but it's got to end in tragedy, and that's a really interesting mix. Again, and engages you as the audience. You're not a praying mantis, are you? Fair question, though. Where are you going? Where you cannot follow. The bathroom. Massive shit. Oh. Wait. Oh. oh. <laughs> I was kidding. I was kidding, but fair. Oh, God. You were already dead. But it was not fair. I was innocent. Exactly. The people you kill now, so that you may live, they are innocent. Also true. Please, I am in love. Oh, also true, I feel, from her perspective. <laughs> oh. Hello. Okay. So she has to keep doing that. Otherwise, I guess she'll mummify. That's a problem. Because it's one thing that, you know, she took on part of his life. And now she is not a lifeless mummy. It's one thing if that would have stayed like that and that was it and it was done. But if she has to keep doing that, that's... Yeah. She's got to go back in the tomb, hasn't she, really? If anything, actually, that little detail makes it less of a good episode for me. Because I feel like if she didn't have to, maybe it's just a power. Maybe I'm assuming too much as well, right? Maybe she just used that because she has that power and he was threatening her with, with, with death. Maybe, maybe I'm reading too much into it. But if it turns out that she has to keep doing that to survive, that's less contentious as an idea to the audience, right? It makes it easy. It's like, well, she can't keep doing that. That's wrong. It makes it more certainly wrong, which makes it less gray, which in my mind makes it less of an interesting dilemma to have to solve. You remind me of someone from very long ago, the Inca princess. Cool. Well, just coming out with that, eh? That only she could defend her people from the netherworld. Yeah. Out of all the girls in her generation. Interesting, isn't it? Yeah, we've had her called the chosen one as well. And there are parallels between her and Buffy. So it's interesting, isn't it? Because I feel like Buffy is going to feel a lot of kinship with her and be very empathetic towards her when um, the time comes. It's also interesting because it might make Buffy reflect a little bit. Because I feel like, I feel like, I don't know, but I feel like this is going towards, obviously, Amparta, the princess, going back into the tomb, being back, you know, put back in as a mummy, which is akin to death. I mean, she'd be dead, right? Well, I say akin, she'd be dead. And it's interesting with the parallel that we're setting up between her and Buffy, that Buffy's probably going to look at that and be like, is that where I'm going to end up? You know, as the chosen one, is that going to be my fate? Which could be interesting. I mean, it was her fate at one point, right? I'll just unpack the rest of your stuff for you. No, really, let oh. me. Whoa, that's where you put it, mate. Romance, lips. Mm, that's a good point. Can she kiss it? She's not gonna be able to kiss him because surely that zaps him, right? Two days in America and Ampata already seems like she belongs here. How about that? Right, and I guess Buffy isn't allowed to either. I mean, again, this, this parallel, right? She can't have a life. I almost wore the same thing. <laughs> you look great, mate. That harpoon, you can stick Cordelia with it later. Good times. My own speechless human boomerang. How about simple instruction? My goodness. Get punchy. Mate, you should impale like both of them just with the with your helmet. He can follow me. Good. <laughs> Willow. You look awesome, dude. Must be sweltering though, to be fair. Maybe I should have worn something sexy. No! Like honestly, you're the best dressed. Heaven's your home. Go on, Giles. What you realized? Why would the mummy kill her own bodyguard? I've looked at the pictograms and knew he was, he was meant to keep her. It was yep. his job to ensure that the mummy didn't awaken and escape. Yeah. Part of translated wrong. On purpose. How about this one? <laughs> I'd love to dance. Whoa. Hi, mate. Oh, it's very sweet, isn't it? Hey. Mm. That girl. All right, Sethy boy. No, not her. Willow. The Eskimo. Oh, of course. <laughs> yep, yeah, she looks awesome. She looks banging, dude. This is a lot of staring at each other's face, dude. <laughs> she can't, right? Oh, maybe she can. Ooh, maybe she... Yeah. Yep. Oh, dear. Hey, just give him one of these. You know what I mean? Maybe don't make that face, but... I thought this exchange student thing would be a great deal. But look what I got stuck with. Ah. Uh... <laughs> is Cordelia even from this country? I love this for him. Yikes. Yeah, so she has to keep doing it. Hands feel kind of... Don't look at me. Mate. Close your eyes. Yeah, it makes it less interesting to me that she has to keep doing it. There you are. I do not deserve you. Ooh, it would be interesting if she was honest with him and actually just told him. I'd like that. Man, I love you. It would put a lot on Xander's shoulders too. Bless him. I'm very sad. 
Yeah, I think she is. Then talk to me. Good. It would be the interesting writing choice. I'm sorry. But why are you trying to kiss now, though? You know, she's like super upset. Oh, she's going in. Oh, you can then. Very close up of those lips, mate. Okay, so she can choose whether to do it or not. Fair enough. Good. Ooh, that was loud. Jeez. Oh. Never had his tongue sucked before. No, I can't. Okay, no, she was trying to do the thing. Fair enough. A pot is the mummy. Oh. Good. <laughs> Xander. <laughs> Backstage, I think. Hey, I oh, hey, mate. You'll get your chance. Don't worry about it. Is she going to appeal to him and be like, please don't. I want my life. That would be cool. One more piece. Okay. Oh, come on. For real? Oh, what a leap. Oh, Giles, no. Kick in. Uh, well, okay. Oh, she can get out of that for sure. Sand, we can be together. No, you can't because you have to keep doing this. You want life? You're going to have to take mine. Mm. Can you do that? Bless him. Good on him. Brave. Yes. Wow. Ouch. <laughs> Yum. Oof. Yeah, I feel like this, th that whole bit there could have been played for a little bit more tragedy. Tugged on the heartstrings a little bit more. If you ask me, like, personally. Like, it was a little bit, but, yeah. This is what I mean. They didn't really dial down on... You know, we had that moment where the princess was talking to Buffy in her bedroom, and they were talking, and she was like, oh, I, I didn't have a... Uh, the princess didn't have a life and all this stuff, you know. That that was kind of more presenting it to the audience in a, in a, in a less subtler way, right? But I feel like it would have been nice, maybe, if she'd have actually told Xander, and then Xander would have had the conundrum of, like... What do I do here? She's imparted this secret to me. For me, that would have just made a more interesting dynamic, right? Because then like Buffy and the crew aren't just fighting the princess, they're fighting Xander a little bit as well. It's like, can we not find a way to make it work? Can we not find a way to, you know, resurrect her in a way that doesn't kill other people? Do you know what I mean? And give her that life. I just feel like, do you know what I mean? There was more fodder, I think, there with that kind of decision. Just more interesting to me. Which, you know, look, it might not be more interesting to you, so that's fair. It's just, you know, my tastes more so. And then as well, when she came to the museum, it would have been interesting for her to kind of go to Giles, right? He's putting the thing together and she's like, please don't, don't. And then he, he's like, what? He's like, whoa. He's kind of, he senses the danger. But then she doesn't take the tack of like physically trying to overpower him. She instead goes like, and honestly appeals to him. And like, I didn't have a life. I really want a life. I was never given that. Please don't do this to me. And then suddenly Giles, if he, to save the day, he has to kill her. Do you know what I mean? Which would have been much more of a, an interesting scene to me. So I thought, I think including those two kinds of scenes in place of what we kind of got would have just been more interesting, right? Ah, this is more cut and dry, a little bit simpler. And you know what I was talking about? Maybe would have increased the runtime a little bit more, which they maybe couldn't have done. Yeah, that's how I would how I would change it. How I would make it more interesting. At least, like I say, to me, this is all subjective. Ankara wasn't evil. Yeah. At least not to begin with. I don't think she was evil even now. I think she was just desperate. Yeah, but I think that whole sucking the life out of people thing would have been a strain on the relationship. Yes. She was just a girl, and she had her life taken away from her. Mm -hmm. I remember how I felt when I heard the prophecy that I was exactly. I wasn't exactly obsessed with doing the right thing. Lots of comparison between Buffy and uh, the princess. Yeah, but you did. You gave up your life. I had you to bring me back. It's true, but the princess like gave up her life once, right? She was asked to do it again, right? In this episode, it wasn't quite the same as Buffy. Yeah, yeah. There we go. Hey, look, you know, decent episode. Um, I think more potential in the episode than anything though, that I don't think was quite utilized to its fullest extent. Still a decent episode. Um, nice themes there. Maybe they just didn't have the run time to do more with it as well. I don't know if you asked me there was, but uh, you know, it is what it is. Decent, just uh, a little bit disappointing in the ways that I thought it was gonna go in and, and didn't, right? But hey, that was episode four, Inca Mummy Girl of season two. Thank you so much for watching. Subscribe if you haven't already. And thank you so much for those who support me. I've got a uh, YouTube memberships and Patreon links in the description down below if you'd like to support me. I've got early access and uh, a little slice of life tier as well. Also got some books on sale down there as well, some novellas if you're interested. But other than that, thank you so, so much for watching. Consider clicking on this video right here to keep the good times rolling and show support that way instead. But other than that, thank you and I'll see you soon.